What's going on, family? It's your girl, Garuji Chastity. What's going on, family? It's your girl, Garuji Chastity. And today, I want to talk about hot to cold seasonal depression since moving. All right? I want to go ahead and get into it. We got a hot one on the way. You feel me? So look, family. The whole reason I moved to Florida in the first place was because I was done. And when I mean done, do you hear me? I mean done with cold weather. I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, where six months out of the year, it was cold and dreary and depressing. You couldn't go outside for six months of the year. I was like, this is chaos. This is a madness, okay? And so since moving because of Hurricane Ian, I've now moved to somewhere colder <laughs> than that's real. And thankfully, if I wasn't warm by the love that I live within, within my household, I would have been out for the count because I would not be able to weather the cold that I experience externally. But my internal wor world has now become so warm that I feel like I'm able to bear the brunt of the cold weather that I have now put myself in since being displaced, you know, by Hurricane Ian. And so the reason why we are here today is because I feel like there is power in sharing. And so sharing my story allows me to feel seen heard and supported and in turn give somebody else the space and so seasonal affective disorder seasonal depression is a real thing and so instead of showing up here like hey do this you know I just want to share my personal experience how it's currently affecting my life how I'm currently working through it in hopes that it's able to help you just be more you you know what I'm saying one of the things that I believe is that my body my car my body is my vehicle of existence, which is my car. And so essentially, I am walking a dirt path. And the more I walk towards myself, I create a path that's visible for other people and for myself. Right. And so when I create a path that's visible for other people, it allows them the same path that I was afforded, which is just walking closer to myself, being more a unique expression of consciousness called chastity. You see what I'm saying? And so individuation is the vibe. But sometimes we need a roadmap. We need a blueprint. We just need somebody that had gone there before so we can go there, too. Right. And so that's what I love doing um, when I share my stories and when I share my wisdom on Wednesday. So today we are not really in a whole bunch of me teaching Bob, you know, I'm a student, right? I'm allowing myself to be the student by sharing my story. And I hope in sharing my story that I'm able to learn from it myself and that you're able to learn and to do some wisdom from it that you can drop on me. You know what I'm saying? And so first things first, man, the first two weeks of moving to Philly have been rough. Um, I am now in my third week and I am finally there with it right you know sometimes you don't want to call a thing a thing because you don't want to jinx it but i feel good about it i feel good about it okay so the truth of the matter is um i didn't rip the little thing off my book i didn't got excited the truth of the matter is is that what happened was when i just came back you know i at the beginning of october right after the hurricane i took a reprieve in philly which i have a video called part one surviving hurricane Ian, and then there's also a part two but for part one i initially just came to philly to take a breath to get a reprieve to finally pause because within that week two week experience of the actual hurricane i was just being shuffled around until i could figure out you know what was life gonna look like and so coming to get this reprieve was my opportunity to do that in a safe loving environment and so I came up here for two weeks, stayed for that reprieve, and then now we were like, all right, bet, we actually want to move up here. And so within making that decision, we were like, we got to go back. And so when we went back, got our stuff finalized, closed everything, now being in Philly, the two weeks that you know, I've been here, I was really lost in my head. The first week I was just telling myself, you know, it's fine to not do anything because you're just getting settled. You know, we finally rooted everything in. Then the second week was like, this, you suck, this is trash, what are you going to do? You can't figure it out. And now the third week was like, oh, okay, bet. Like, no, like, come on, let's go. Like, I got my mindset back that I had already kind of planted the seed for because I had to sit down with my homie's parents to be like, all right, you know, this is what we're doing. We appreciate y'all helping us. Like, boom, 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 let's make it shake, right? Um, 
And so within that, when I had to lay out my plan in front of someone else, it called it, it called into question my own level of discipline, my own level of accountability. And so in that moment, I was like, we finna make it shake. And then I got back and my shit said, wah, wah, wah. And so now refinding that focus, refinding that, that balance, that fire feels really good. But the truth of the matter is the first two weeks were rough for me. And the reason why I feel this is important to share because I was talking to my homie, Brandon Summers, who is an amazing being. He is the most resilient people I know. I told him, you remind me so much so of the foods called in tarot, just the open hearted food, you know, just receiving everything and, you know, just collecting the data, not making it mean nothing about him, about the experience. No, none of that. Just out here open with it. I said, one of the reasons I love talking to you is that out of someone I admire, you never shy away from telling me, like, it's hard, though. <laughs> it, it ain't easy. This It took me a minute to get here because he was speaking to me about how he was building structure and stability in his life so he can reinforce success so that when it comes, he's prepared for it. He's better able to see it. He's better able to engage with it. And I was like, I bet that. And he was like, but... It's been a tough road getting here. It's been a slow road getting here. It's taken me time. And he further broke down, you know, if I got to build the foundation of this house a hundred times, I'm going to do it with joy. I'm going to do it with pride because I know each time I'm learning something more, how to reinforce it better, how to do it differently, right? Because you always are learning and you're always, you always are growing. And so this is why I found it really important to share that like, no, nah, y'all, I was like in the thick of the stories, like really feeling like I didn't belong that I was unworthy, um, that I shouldn't be receiving the blessings that I'm currently receiving, the space, you know, the gratitude, the grace that I'm currently receiving, all of that. I was just like, I suck. You know, I should have my life together way better than this and at this age, like all of this. Damn near, you would have thought I made the hurricane and I put it there on myself. Like, it was that deep. And it took me a second to come out of it. And even as a healer and a teacher, as you guys see me on here, I'm that's how I know how to teach because I'm coming from that place of trying it out of being in that dark place and being resilient enough to be like hey cuz that's what just happened that's what just went on down there and I don't shy away from my opportunity to go into a dark place because I learn more about myself but in this go round right the second thing that I want to share so that was the first thing first thing being that like yo I struggle too and it's okay right? So you're going to struggle and it's okay. It's okay to can't. That's our favorite little motto in the house. It's okay to can't. It's fine, dog. It's cool. The reason why, you know, it's important to be in those moments and not try to get, not live there, get stuck there is because they're meant to be fuel, right? So even though, you know, I got stuck in that negative story, I was able to use it to light a fire up under me. This is when they say, you know, I lit a fire up under my ass. Because sometimes you get so low in that vibrational state and you'll rub against someone who isn't vibrating like that. And if they love you enough to keep it 100, right, that'll give you a genuine opportunity to, to connect with them, but also to connect with yourself and hear maybe what you can't see. Because normally we see ourselves as flat. We don't really see ourselves as three-dimensional and five-dimensional beings. It takes someone else and their reflection of us, sometimes negative, but hopefully positive, you know, in the instance that I'm talking about now, you know, that allowed me truly to transmute my experience, to use all of that negativity, all those negative stories to prove to myself that that ain't it, that ain't going to be it, right? You know, one of the things that, you know, I've been telling myself is that I'm not going to move to Philly and be living how I was in Florida. In Florida, I had so many ups and downs, you know, with depression, being on the right path, but feeling like I'm not, right? But it really informed my work, even though I got really lost in it. And it was coming up here and being told that like, hey, bit dog, you like, you in your head too much. Like, wait a minute now wait a minute. And it took somebody getting mad at me and then through them calming down, pointing that out. Right. And I was like, oh, OK, I get that. That that makes sense. And it was in that conversation, again, that lit a fire up under me that made me say that, like, you know what? I'm not going to go through these ebbs and flows of depression and 
feeling like God's gift to earth and the next minute not knowing who I am and not knowing my worth. Like, I'm not going to keep going through that. I'm about to get jiggy with cyclical goals. I'm about to get jiggy with stability. I'm about to get jiggy with discipline, right? Living in Florida just allowed me to have a very laissez-faire attitude. Every day felt like a vacation just because of the weather, just because of the environment, and because of the work that I was doing, you know? And no day ever was too hard on your on your boy you know what i'm saying it was always a good time just by stepping outside and so now it's like i'm ready and willing to be in a space in life where it is you know pedal to the metal it is strap up your boots it is like let's just go for it and stay consistent within it and learn from it it really is learn as you go and not try to be 10 steps ahead and stressed out you see what i'm saying and so that's the second thing that I wanted to share that was that was really important that I transmuted the energy of discomfort by using fire, literally having a fire lit up under me through, you know, sharing my story with someone else and then being honest and saying, like, hey, dog, you tripping and it allowed me to be like, well, am I? Do I agree with that? Because we don't always have to adhere to the stories that other people tell us, but you can see their perspective. And that's why I like stories. I personally don't rock with advice unless I summon it, unless I ask for it. But I love to hear stories and I love to share mine because it allows me to get a new, a fresh, revitalized perspective. The beauty of what I do is not that I'm reinventing the wheel. I'm not. I'm just really good at saying, hey, dog, look, let's look in the same direction. And when you look in the same direction I'm looking, you normally be like, oh, that's what you, okay, yeah. And that's the vibe. That's it. That's it. All right. So the third thing that I want to share is that this Sunday, yes, November 20th, this Sunday, I will be hosting a Instagram live where I specifically talk about how to practically deal with seasonal affective disorder. I created a course a year ago that I felt like would withstand the test of time because it really breaks down, you know, what loneliness is, you know, how to build better boundaries, how to take care of yourself past the superficial, because it is those things that create the fertile ground for seasonal affective disorder to, to root itself in your being, in your thinking. And we don't have to go there. We can have a standard in place that won't allow that seed to plant, right? And so I want to talk about those things in a live where I just share, you know, some really powerful nuggets that have helped me that, again, I feel like will withstand the test of time that have helped my students in numerous ways because it's it's all about knowing what's going on. We suffer a lot because we don't know what's going on. Going on and so you just being blown by the wind but the moment you know that like hey yo i can participate in this i can engage in this in a healthy and meaningful way you do just that you see what i'm saying and so be on the lookout for that sunday november 20th 4 p.m to 5 p.m eastern standard time i will be on instagram live where i will be talking about how to practically deal with seasonal affective disorder and you don't want to miss it okay you don't want to miss it in the meantime in between time if you're watching this i love you and i appreciate you therefore there's 20 percent off on my course directly talking about seasonal affective disorder right i give you some amazing tips on how to start right on how to get curious how to set the intentions. I get, I help you see what your obstacle is, what stands in the, in the way of what you discover about what you're trying to create. And then I teach you on what action you can take right here, right now in the present moment with this course. Okay. And so 20% off, if you go to gurujichastity.com and join me at the Abundant Living Guru Cool, you'll have access to that 20% off right away. Because again, I appreciate you watching this video and getting this far just to hear about the experience that I've been having since I've moved from Florida to Philadelphia and how seasonal affective disorder shows up in my life. Because the truth of the matter is, just because I'm good at my job, i.e. communicating mystical wisdom, bringing it down from the heavens into reality and make it practical just because i'm good at that don't mean i don't suffer too don't mean i don't be out here human human it because you know what they say people be people and we just gotta keep on living right i'd be a part of it too it's it, it, it's a part of it for me too and just because i'm good at my job don't mean i always have it together don't mean i always 
don't need don't mean I, I don't need support. I do be needing support. And I be having to reach out to folks for help. I text my coach the other day and was just like, I just feel like I shouldn't exist. Two minutes later, I was like, I was dramatic. <laughs> I know. But thank you for listening. I have those moments too. So it's okay to Kate family. Until next time, I love you. Peace out.